So much good happened on the Shreveport Barksdale Bridge last week. Yes, good. At one of the worst times in a young lady's life. I know it's painful for some to watch this, including her family, but my hope is tonight's pain will be tomorrow's road to healing. Last week, I told you all about two Bossier City Police Officers, Corporal Matthew Bragg and Officer Brandon Bailey. They held on to that person for dear life to keep her from falling into the Red River. I showed you and then talked to the Good Samaritan named Rawless Leslie, who sped to the scene and helped them pull her back to safety. But I need to be honest with you about something. I didn't tell you everything. Much like there was a time and a place for those three men to be on that bridge to save a life last week. The same is true for the rest of the story. Tonight on The Good Stuff is the time and the place to tell you the person in need of rescue on that bridge on that day was far from the only one. Hold up, ma'am. It's not gonna be okay. I knew at that time something had to be done. In the day since that Bossier City police officer. Get it, get it, get it, I'm then another. The only thing that really clicked that moment was 1018. I'm on the ledge. I got no liberty. Are you holding? I'm holding. Rushed their way to the top of this Red River Bridge just when all hope seemed lost. That could have pulled them over. They weren't letting, they was not going to let go. I can already see that. And when a third man named Rollis Leslie appeared out of nowhere. God, all I saw was this blue shirt coming towards me asking, can I help? And we were both like, please. Hey, boys, we need boats in the water right now. We've become increasingly fascinated with their quick thinking. Did she say anything to you? Or? What are you thinking in that moment? Did you guys speak to the Good Samaritan afterwards? Their bravery. When she took her shoes off, that to me is the indicator that now's the time. And the incredible timing of it all. And if you ask these officers, you uh, are trying to stay calm as well. And we did. They'll tell you it was like Rawless was predestined to be the person who stopped that day. I thank God he was there, because honestly, I don't know how much longer I could have hold on. <laughs> but what makes this particular moment even more amazing is a few things I didn't share with you the other day when we first met Rawless. The first day she found out, she um, went straight to hug her daddy. Many years ago while living in Florida, while on a morning run near a beach. I, I was running up the bridge. And before they could get to him, he was going ahead and trying to, to climb over. And as soon as he got to the point where he could push off, I was able to snatch his arm. Yeah, it happened before. He pulled the man back from the edge just as officers were pulling up on scene. And then some 20 years ago, back when he was in the Army, he and his sister LaShun pulled up on a crash with a young lady trapped under a flipped car. <laughs> got down with the other two gentlemen and started lifting the car so that they could pull the young lady from uh, the, the pregnant young lady from uh, the vehicle. Wow. Wow. I know, right? For these officers, this sealed the deal that Rawless had to be. At the perfect person at the right time at the right place. But what if I told you Rawless, who's built like a linebacker, feels he's anything but the perfect person? who stepped up at really one of the worst times, at absolutely the last place he wanted to be. That's the problem. I don't like going over bridges. I do it every day. You see, back during his army days, while riding in a convoy, he was involved in a bridge top accident that left him seriously injured. From that day, his bridge anxiety has gotten so bad a few years ago, he locked up behind the wheel while driving over another local bridge. Yeah, the Bossier police officer had to follow me over the bridge, over the Jimmy Davis Bridge before. I got stuck, I got stuck halfway on the bridge. For Rollis, the line between rescuer and being rescued is as thin as any line between life and death. Yeah, I was suicidal. Had any one of his past attempts been successful, he wouldn't have been crossing that bridge last week at just that time. When he was going through his situation, God had other plans for him. Plans that involved Rollis and his wife, Cece, hopping in his truck that day. We had just left the store and we were going to my doctor's appointment. And at that very moment, headed over the bridge to the VA hospital for a PTSD therapy appointment to manage his own pain. I ended up losing my job um, during the pandemic. So with my medical issues, it kind of um, interferes the kind of pain that everyone needs to understand 
can make anyone, including a hero, feel like all hope is lost. I don't really see that as being a big deal, but I feel like anybody could have done that. But they didn't. Wow. A pain that all the thanks in the world helps. After everything he has gone through in his own personal life, for him to be able to say, I am going to help. But still isn't enough to instantly pull him back from his own daily ledge. I love him. It actually makes me or Valley more life because you don't know what other people are going through and I know what he goes through. I likely uh, talked with Rallis uh, more off camera than we did on. It took a lot for him to open up. That's part of the healing process. And I told him, we all have stuff. You, me, every stinking one of us, we just need to admit it. Some more than others. And some are just built better to handle it than others. It's, it's almost like that full tank of gas in your car. That's a lot of fun. You can go anywhere. Even it will leave you stranded on the side of the road if you let that tank bottom out because you didn't watch the gas gauge. And there is no lonelier feeling than if that side of the road is at the top of a bridge.